topic, which is ARVD. ARVD stands for Arrhythmogenic Right Ventricular Dysplasia. Of course, if there is a problem uh, which can also progress to what is called as cardiomyopathy. So it has a long, long history, in fact. And uh, recently, what has been uh, with, from World Health Organization, it was decided that ARVD, which is a dysplasia, it should be considered as a manifestation of the cardiomyopathy. So dysplasia is different and cardiomyopathy is also different. So coming to the incidence, so what happens is uh, males are much more predisposed, okay, and the, in the general population, it's it is estimated like up to 0.1% of those patients can have. Although in some of the islands, especially in the regions of Italy and Greece, they are more common in fact. And most of these patients are young patients who present to us with history of syncope, ventricular tachycardia or even cardiac arrest. So that is why a lot of times they may be missed as well. And <clears throat> up to 50% of those patients can have an autosomal dominant inheritance. So that is why it is important for the genetic screening as well for those patients. How about others? Can others hear my voice? Yes, sir. Okay, so I think for him there is a local problem. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So as I was telling, up to 50% of those patients can have a genetic mechanism. So that is why, so one should be careful about something like uh, if there is a chromosome 17 Q21 changes or otherwise even something like a desmosomal protein placophilin 2 uh, changes as well. These are some of those most common ones which is commonly associated with the mutation for these patients. So coming to the anatomy, so what happens is whenever uh, you try to see the heart, there is a segmental. So in a special segment, there may be loss of RV myocytes and they get changed by fibro fatty tissue and thinning of the RV wall. And also what will happen is there is fatty infiltration of right ventricular. And that is the thing which may sometimes may not be seen in some of those patients as well. So therefore, while trying to make a diagnosis of ARVD or uh, dysplasia or cardiomyopathy, you should try to see for presence of fibrosis, which probably is more atmogenic, especially compared to the fatty infiltration. And the fibro fatty replacement usually begins in the subepicardium or mural layers, which progresses to the subendocardium. And only the endocardium and the myocardium of the trabeculae may be spared. Okay, so this is how the histopathological specimen looks like, as I said it, with combination of fatty deposits and also with interstitial fibrosis. So as I had already said it, when you will try to look grossly, you will see there's mild to severe global RV dilatation. RV aneurysm and segmental RV hypokinesia. The sites of involvement are found in the so-called triangles of dysplasia like the RVOT, the apex and the infundibulum. However, the fibro fatty pattern of this is not only limited to the RV, may also affect the LV as well. So this is the reason it is called as, nowadays uh, there is a newer term also it is called as so, this is called as ventricular cardiomyopathy rather than RV or only LV because it can also affect the, up to 40 to 50 percent of the times, it can also affect the left ventricle as well. Coming to the etiology, there are four theories which has been proposed. So, one is dysontogenic, degenerative, inflammatory and apoptotic. So what has happened is there is a someone really uh, a renowned person, especially on this field, who has worked, like D. Amati, who proposed transdifferentiation theory, which means that 
the cells can change from the muscle to the adipose tissue. This is the reason why in those segments of the heart uh, you will see adipose tissue rather than the muscular tissue. And also there has been some of those people have been telling that maybe it is due to the virus, uh, viral infection as well. And some people have also been telling about the genetic causes for this. So on the ECG, normally you can see 90% of the times changes are there. What are the changes? Rhythm is sinus, but there is wider QRS, especially in the lead V1. And there is terminal deflection within or at the end of the QRS. So this is what is called as epsilon wave. Okay. And it is characteristically seen in lead V1 to V3. So that will be there present in up to 30% of the cases. And also T wave inversion is seen in the right precordial leads. So none of these ECGs are seen in 100% of those patients. But as I said it, yeah, I think, uh, yes, my screen is shared. Anyone is having a problem with that? Yeah, yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Hello. Dr. Can you please stop sharing and share it again? I think it got struck. Oh. Can you please check the next step for the doctor? Okay, okay. I'm stopping the sharing the screen. And then again, I'm resharing now. Now, are you able to see it? Is it there now? And how about others? It's still loading, sir. Oh. Yeah, now we can able to see the slide called the ECG findings. Okay, wonderful. That's what. So it should come. It should come. So what I was telling is, in not all of those patients, you may be able to see the ECG. But most of the times, for example, what is called as epsilon waves in V1 to V3, you will be able to see one third of the patients. An inversion of T wave in the right precordial leads, at least in 50% of those patients, you will be able to see. And yes, the QRS is going to be wider. So this is the classical ECG how you see. So what do you notice is in lead V1 to V4, what do you notice over here? So this is what is characteristic epsilon wave. And in the right side it precordial leads, for example, V1 to V3, you see T inversion as well. Isn't it? So what is happening is there is a right bundle branch block as well and the epsilon wave which has been marked over here. So don't forget these waves. So this is what is called as the epsilon wave. Okay. So hopefully you all will never forget. So RBVB may also be seen and when you suspect expose these patients for exercise testing, 50 to 60 percent of these patients can show ventricular arrhythmias. Okay. And then what happens is, yes, uh, there are some additional minor findings as well, which has been shown like the ratio of the QRS duration in the lead V1, V2 and V3. The sum is more than the one of V4, V5 and V6. 
So in the right-sided leads, the ratio of QRS is much wider. So I'll try to show you again in the ECG. If you look carefully, the right-sided ECG QRS duration is bigger compared to the left-sided ones. <coughs> so for example, in V1, V2 and V3, the QRS width is bigger, right? Compared to the V4, V5, V6, right? So this is the same thing what has been predisposed. And if you will expose these patients for a treadmill test, you will observe ventricular arrhythmias as well. So what happens is, uh, yes, and uh, most of the times these people may have like a RVOT, VT as well, or even sometimes superior access with the RV inferior wall. And then what happens is, uh, if you come across such things in a sports person, you should ask that sports person to avoid such kind of exercise. Absolutely. So this is a ECG which was seen in a 25 year old gentleman with VT. And when later on, when the patient was uh, seen in detail, uh, ARVC was confirmed. So what do you notice in this ECG? If you look carefully, this is left bundle branch block, right? So this is a left bundle branch block and after that 2-3 AVF is positive. So it will go to the RVOT. In the RVOT, now 1 is negative. So if 1 is negative, where will it go? So it will be in the anteromedian wall. So those patients, as I said it, most of the times, those patients will come to you with fatigue, atypical chest pain, syncope, or even acute coronary syndrome. And ARVD is a disease that may have a temporal progression. And the disease may progress with passage of time as well. So there may be a symptomatic form with transient or sustained VT, as you saw in the ECG. But... RBBB, right bundle branch block, may also be seen, in fact. A patient, especially who is really symptomatic, you will notice significant VPC burden. VPC burden in terms of there are more than 1,000 beats in every 24 hours. RV failure with or without arrhythmias can be seen. And a masked form in which... Uh, you know, structural heart disease and all are seen, especially during the exercise. So that can also be seen, especially a lot of times like the first clinical presentation. So, the, I mean to say that overall presentation can vary upon from uh, patient to patient. So, the physician has to be a bit careful. There's cardiac electrical instability and also progression of the RV dysplasia with time. And mortality can range from 4% to 20%. And both the sexes, both males and females, they have a similar mortality rate, especially with a peak of at the fourth decade. And this, this may account for up to 55%. So a lot of those young adults who have sudden cardiac death, they have a really, they have a really huge incidence rate. So that's why... It needs to be really ruled out if there is a someone comes with to you with right bundle branch block. So in fact, when they try to study as well about the natural history of such kind of patients, they said it. Uh, majority of those patients, for example, majority of those patients had uh, sudden cardiac death, but due to the progression of the heart failure, with a mortality of almost 2.3%. And in most patients where the mechanism of sudden death is acceleration of VT with ultimate degeneration into VF. So as I said it about the diagnosis, you have to see for the histological demonstration of transmural fibrofatty replacement of RV myocardium at autopsy or surgery. The myocardial biopsy may lack sufficient sensitivity because the Biopsy is normally performed in the interventricular septum, whereas the typical pathologic 
changes of ARVD are most pronounced in the RV free wall. So uh, the diagnosis of the ARVD or cardiomyopathy is based on several major minor criteria involving structural, histological, ECG, arrhythmic and genetic factors. So these are some of those factors which has been put it up. So major criteria include, for example, if there is severe dilatation or reduction of the RV ejection fraction with no or only mild LV impairment. Similarly, if there is localized RV aneurysm or there is severe segmental dilatation of the RV right ventricle. Similarly, if you notice fibrofatty replacement of the myocardium on endomyocardial biopsy or epsilon waves or localized prolongation more than 100 milliseconds of the QRS complex is seen in the right precordial leads. Similarly, if familial disease is confirmed at the necrosy, ne necropsy means autopsy of a person when someone is already dead or otherwise even during surgery. So these are some of those major criteria. There are a lot of minor criteria as well. For example, those ECG criteria uh, like the inversion of the T wave, late potentials. Late potentials are typically seen when a signal averaged ECG is done. So for the diagnosis, a uh, modification of the task force criteria has been put up. So 28% of those patients have been said to have ARVD when all the cardiovascular parameters were taken to, into account. So what it means is not all the patients will be having all the symptoms in fact. Okay. However, they say if you notice ECG holter or even echo uh, parameter, you may think of the familial involvement. Similarly, uh, based on our experience, what has been noticed is like the negative patients who are suspected of having ARVD or ARVC, you should try to look out for those. And if you come across these kind of symptoms, so what are the differential diagnoses you have to think for? The differential diagnosis will be for Uhl disease, okay? Similarly, so what happens is although Uhl disease is mostly more thin, in fact, so during which there is complete absence of myocardial muscle fibers and which is as a, as a result of the apoptotic destruction. And that is why such kind of disease should be differentiated from the myocarditis and biventricular cardiomyopathy. So as I had said it also you should try to separate them from uh, just a second okay this is different cardiography cardiography CT so there are various parameters as well which you can do so there are something called as uh, uh, yeah you should try to whenever you're trying to see the ECG as well you should try to see in those Changes should be there in different ECG. You should try to do those ECGs at different intervals and only then you should confirm that diagnosis. Similarly, there is myocardial imaging is very important for such kind of patients. You should also do RV contrast angiography for the detection of such kind of patients. Okay. Similarly, so this is how the typically the RV angiogram of the patient will be looking in which you can clearly notice the trabeculations and also the akinetic aneurysmatic bulges of the RVOT. The most widely used non-invasive technique for assessing cardiac performance in ARVD is when you see on the echo. An echo, but what do you notice? RV dilatation, enlargement of the RA, the isolated dilatation of the RVOT, increased reflectivity of the moderator band, localized aneurysms, decreased fraction, fractional area change, and akinesis, and or dyskinesis of the inferior wall and the RV apex. T is the preferred approach in obese patients and in patients who have pulmonary emphysema. 
so contrast echo may also be helpful for this so this is how you look like especially in the contrast echo especially of a young guy how it was seen during the CT as well CT is also a pretty good uh, can help in diagnosis of such uh, things so especially it is important uh, whenever you are you have you are trying to evaluate on a serial basis for a patient who has already undergone ICD implantation. MRI is also a uh, good modality for detection of such things. In fact, uh, you may be able to notice RV aneurysms, regional thinning, RV dilatation, failure of systolic thickening, and impaired global and diastolic RV function. And in addition, it allows velocity mapping of tricuspid flow, which may be an early but non-specific sign. So, uh, there has been some proposed criteria on the basis of MRI, which shows us if you are able to see substitution of the myocardium by fat, ectasia of the RVOT, dyskinetic bulges, or also the RV dilatation, or if there is RA inter enlargement as well. So this is how it cl classically looks like. So it is called as, as you may notice, is transmural fatty replacement of the RV into cardium, myocardium. So do you notice over here, here where the arrow is pointing, there should be the muscle, but you don't see the muscle over here. So what do you notice over here is, so what do you notice over here? So there is transmural fatty replacement. So there is fat rather, other, rather than the myocardium over here. Okay. So the diagnosis of ARVD does not rely, cannot rely on the qualitative features of the cardiovascular MRI. But you also have to do uh, sometimes a re-evaluation or for example, uh, try to see it by the other methods as well. So sometimes, because what happens is if you try to depend on single imaging modality, problems can be there, in fact. So you should try to do, try to use multiple modalities as well. So as, I, as we had said it, so some of those parameters which should be used for the confirming its diagnosis should be morphological, functional, and also the flow dynamic criteria for the diagnosis. But yes, MRI is definitely an important tool for the diagnosis. So now coming to the therapy. So even its therapy as well has to be multi-approach based. Multi-approach based means you have to consider the other things as well like the antiarrhythmic agents, radio frequency ablation, ICD therapy, also take care of the heart failure treatment as well and also the surgical treatment. Coming to the antiarrhythmic drugs, so what has been shown is sotolol is more effective than the beta blockers or amiodron because either it is inducible or non-inducible VT. You should give sotolol, not beta blocker or amiodron for such kind of patients and it is not known whether sotolol can be used for the sudden cardiac death for such kind of patients. So ablation does have a role, especially for those patients who are intolerant to drug or ineffective. So what you can do is the electroanatomical mapping constitutes a suitable way to visualize the myocardium in events or in the patients with the ARVD. So by studying the spatial association of endocardial electrograms, significant loss of myocytes has been shown to result in recordings of non-amplitude, fractionated endocardial ECGs with a prolonged duration. And there was an excellent concordance with the echocardiography and cardiovascular MRI in detecting the pathological substrate. So this was a young lady, I would say, so who had presented with the VT. But what do you notice over here is when you are close to the interesting endocardial conduction system, you notice fragmented late potentials. 
in all these ECGs and that's like a very characteristic for such ARVDs. So uh, problem is uh, the success rates are not really good because of the multiple arrhythmogenic foci which can be indeed difficult to abolish. So what happens is one has to really uh, take care of there's a lot of plenty of those foci as well so it can be indeed difficult. So what happens is uh, one must use a 3D mapping as well. So this was one of the persons for which 3D mapping was used. And the different areas, this kind of signals was seen, especially in the RVOT, outflow track, when the catheter was being dragged. So the ICT therapy should be reserved for only those cases who are at serious risk for sudden cardiac death. So the patient at highest risk are those who have been resuscitated or those who are unresponsive or intolerant of antiarrhythmic therapy. Those with the disease who have a family history of cardiac arrest in first degree relatives, for example like primary prevention. So there is no evidence that patients who have a positive family history but no evidence of the disease are at exceptional high risk. Similarly, Programming may be slightly difficult because two things are there. The patient can have also SVT or even VT as well. Similarly, the fiber fatty layer nature of the RV may also be crew. It may make it difficult to sense the right arrhythmia. So on an overall basis, the clinical questions. So what is actually done in especially in the West and all I would say. So if there is a patient who has had ventricular arrhythmia or positive family history, otherwise VT or VF who is prone for collapse or hemodynamic unstable VT, otherwise frequently occurring stable VTs or which are difficult to abolish by RF ablation, they are the ones for which ICD should be implanted. Now how about the heart failure treatment? But the heart failure treatment, it should be treated with the usage of ABCD and what is ABCD means A for ACE inhibitors or anticoagulation, B for beta blockers, C, CD cardioverter defibrillators and all we know and D for diuretics and yes if there is a lot of problems you should try to think for RV transplant. So in between, uh, they were trying to do a right ventricular to me, but it is not uh, so useful in fact. So the success rate for such problem is not so good. So I hope now you will remember dysplasia is a, ARVD is different, ARVC is different. ARVD is dysplasia is a sign of the cardiomyopathy. Okay, so it is a heart muscle disorder which whose course is really not so fixed and is characterized on a pathological basis by fibro fatty replacement of the RV myocardium and electrical instability. The clinical manifestations include structural and functional mal malformations of the RV, ECG abnormalities and also presentations with VT with left bundle branch block or sudden cardiac death as well. So, as echocardiography is the most popular, among the most popular other than ECG as well, so that's why a lot of times the suspicion ha tends to happen for such kind of patients, especially for the detection. So cardiovascular MRI can be used for such kind of patients to give a anatomical, morphological, functional and the flow dynamic criteria to aid in the diagnosis of such patients. And the diagnosis of this ARVD or ARVC consists normally of combination of ECG and morphological criteria as well as the evidence of familial disease. And genetic evaluation is becoming really, really important. As I had said, it, uh, there are a lot of genital parameters which can be seen in such kind of patients. So that's why it is very important. Pharmacological treatment is very important but there is a big role for the ICD therapy and also for the RF ablation. Okay, 
there are some uncertainties about the etiology of the disease, the genetic basis, the appropriate diagnosis and therapy. So, to uh, but there is a lot of research as well which is already going on like the European ARVD registry and there is also a US ARVD study as well. So hopefully with passage of time we should be able to see many more better results. So we are already at the last slide. Are there any questions so far? <laughs>